TV news. Pears. I'll show you why we don't like compaction. So. Done. Empty bag. Got a wee party of cows for me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a beast. Big breakdown. It's a drill working there. Foggy, misty morning. You can see the kind of fog rolling over the hills up there. That's that's yard number two up there. Real damp morning. Not that it matters, but damp and foggy. But the sun's just burning off already. Should be clear in the next half hour. There's the whip. reading on the news that two nitrogen producing factories have shut down. It's American company CF, I think it's called, something like that, shut down two of the factories in England because of natural gas prices going up. Lunchtime. Sounds like the beach. Seagulls going wild. The old man's in the field there, you see him? He's there. We speckle. We've got the dog. He's always looking. If you see the wee bear patch, You've just seen how much of that's come through of the rape. Kind of a bit of a bear patch there, and there's another one a wee bit further up. Malt and barley here. See the rose coming, coming nice. Satisfying, isn't it? Coming up really good. You can see a few weeds coming through there. They should have picked up the pre emergence and hopefully die off. Anyway, back to Diskin. Just about to finish this field. Be about an hour and a half till I get to starting the end rig, but probably not start the end rig because it's rain tomorrow. Kev's not going to catch up with me by tonight in terms of getting to the end rig, I don't think. So don't want to break up the ground because then it takes longer to dry out and it's sticky. Whereas if I leave the end rig, let the rain pour, and then I can get over the top again. And once you break up that first layer of soil, it brings up dry soil, makes it all through and it makes it easier and you can get quicker to it with the drill. I'll show you why we don't like compaction. So I'll pour a bit of juice there. And there's a puddle. Pour a bit of juice over here. It's gone. Well, you can see how hard it is for the water to get away when it's compacted. Then the root systems find it hard to punch through that soil. The worms struggle to move about in the soil as well. We like worms. They kind of open up pores in the soil for drainage and roots to grow. So that's why we do all this work to avoid compaction and the water not running away if there's torrential downpour and the ground's very compact it just runs off the surface rather than soaking through and running water causes a lot of damage it's probably done about 15 hours now nice and warm the friction through them in terms of rolling after the field's been uh, sowed we're not necessarily going to roll it, uh, roll it. it just depends on the weather coming um, if it's going to rain we quite often don't roll it because rolling is one to lock in moisture um, and kind of firm up the soil, but rain does that itself. If you imagine at the beach, right, when the tide is out, so you've got a section of the beach, which is the wet bit where the sea has just been, and it's quite hard and firm and flat, and then you've got a section above it where the water never reaches, and that's all fluffy and free. So at the moment, this, the field is really fluffy and free, but if it rains, it becomes that flat bit where the sea has already gone out. Uh, and it's flat and it's compact um, and it's saturated with water and that section of the beach is the equivalent to this field after it rains um, it's flatter and um, it's more saturated with water and it's firmer so we don't bother rolling if it's going to be raining because the rain does what the rollers would do finished disking i did the end rig in the end because we we'll just have time to finish it all so i'm going to take a, ba a bag of seed up to Kev, so he's definitely got enough. Also, 15 new bullocks that Dad got. All looking fine. Nice looking cattle. These are the other side. These ones are kind of fat. Pretty basically ready to go. So these ones that are at Adlib feeding will go over to there and the calves will line up in here. 
feed are made, still standing anyway. Does the job. Oh, and they're obviously been hauling it out onto the ground though. Oh, bandits. We'll get this up to Kev, bring the empty back down and then I'll head home with that. The discs, they need a bit of, a wee bit of TLC. Another field of barley all rolled up. Hendrix got sown a wee bit later, so they're just coming through. They are there though. You can see the green if you look really closely. It's a 18 hectare field we're going to. What he's got in the hop already should be exactly enough for 18 hectares. Uh, but obviously there's ins and outs um, where he does overlaps over the Hendrix slightly. So it might end up being fractionally less and it's wheat going in the next fields after that field so we'll just go and fill up and that will make sure he definitely gets a finish tonight before the rain comes this bag's going in that hopper and i'm done and then kev's just got a three section to the corner and then the endrick done empty bag home time dad's just taking another load of wheat seed along the road kevin's sowing along at yard number four dunk is plowing i'm not sure where another yard just grabbing that new ram still need to go and get the pipes fitted for it because the fittings here aren't exactly what's on the the pipes only took two minutes so we'll just put a male fitting on each end there and then one of the hoses the one that had obviously broken needed a new uh, fitting on the end 90 junction on it so that's it should be fine to fit up now um i'll go back to the farm fit it all up and just test it works fine there's no leaks. Got all the new joints, we're all good to go. Only thing is, this is just a fraction too wide to fit in this groove. Um, I'm just gonna shave a little bit off of the ram, just off of one of the edges, and then it'll be fine to fit in there. That end fits fine. slide this to where I need it to be to line that pin up and then I've got that pin to go through there. Pin's in, it's a wee bit tight to get it in. Or a clip down the bottom. This one's got a lynch pin. A tight lynch pin. Anyway, abandoning for now. STV are on the way. I don't know where the camera people are, they're meant to be here at one, it's quite fast and I've not seen them. Just out, just out, Laura and Ian, Ian's just been up with his drone, they're just setting up to get a good shot with the sunflowers in the background. When's it going to be up, Laura? Uh, I think this will be on tomorrow night or Wednesday night. Tomorrow, Wednesday night, so it'll already have been on, so I'll try and add it after this if I get it. Behind the scenes. <laughs> Sorry. We're getting ready to go, but dead batteries. Oh, thanks for outing us. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, sunflower season may be coming to an end, but one farm in Perth produced a bumper field of the flowers this year, which they opened to the public for the first time. The Sea of Yellow became such a social media hit, the farmer is now looking ahead to how he can expand the sunny attraction. Laura Boyd went to meet him. They call me mellow yellow quite rightly. This mellow yellow field of 180,000 sunflowers at Globeburn Farm in Perth was the brainchild of farmer Crawford Niven. I'd seen it done abroad but I didn't think it could be done in Scotland and then a fellow farmer Ollie Harrison down south in England he actually did one himself so kind of the idea I was like oh, well we'll try it it could happen it could work. And it more than worked. Thousands of people visited the sunflower sensation, causing it to have to close early when the farm ran out of parking space. It, it went crazy. It went absolutely wild. It just built up and built up, and it was kind of a social media storm. The dogs, uh, the children, the elderly, anything and everything has been here. I designed it as a 30, 40 minute walk at maximum, and you'd see people come out three hours later with the biggest smile on their face. So, yeah, it just went really well. And as a farmer, 
how important is it to diversify as well nowadays? It's always good to diversify. I mean, farming's changing. There's a lot of changes to sustainability and carbon footprint and all that kind of thing. So it's always good to add different things to the farm to not rely just on the one thing. So that's what we're trying to do here. And what are you thinking of doing next? We've got sunflowers this year. Will it be back next year? Yeah, yeah. So sunflowers hopefully be back again next year. But yeah, it gives you an idea to do like sort of pumpkins, tulips, I mean anything, pick your own, people enjoy that, being outdoors, being out in the sunshine, if it is sunny, sunny, or in the rain, doesn't matter, people like being outdoors. A field of joy and a little ray of sunshine, putting smiles on the faces of visitors and those who work here alike. Till next year, if I ever get out of here, what about STV News, Perth, help, help, help! Right, we're done. Started at one, it's now half three. All for, I don't know, well you'll find out soon, 20 seconds or however long it's going to be. Better go do some work, possibly. Kirsten, that's been for wood chips. Wood chip hopper is quite empty. One, because I nicked quite a few for here and just heating in general. That's all and now, I've tightened all these up. Next step, chuck it on, see if it works. Piece of oven almost got stuck in this wee room. You had to cut a wee notch um, to squeeze it out. But anyway, this is the office area. So you can see the kind of door in there and there'll be a separate door here, kind of, kind of L-shaped into the store area. This is all going to be kitted out to be a store, um, to be an office, sorry. That's just getting the last of these wood chips, so I'll grab a bucket and brush and sweep up because there's a bruiser coming hopefully tomorrow, bruise some barley which we'll put in that gap. Feeder's empty. Look at them, look at them charging in. Right, I need to get, get that done quick before they start jumping. Look at her. Hey, on you go. Some moment of truth. It opens and closes anyway. Since the grass is disappearing, I'm gonna grab a couple of bales for the or just one for the cows to munch on. Apparently this stuff takes your breath away when you cut it open. Soon find out. Potent. Oh Jesus. What? They weren't lying, it catches your eyes in the back of your throat. Works fine, back to normal. Cows have now got a bale of wheat straw that they're tucking into. Just now the days are starting to shorten and there's not as much sunlight. The grass isn't really there for the cows and the calves, so chuck a wee bit in to supplement them. Uh, the calves will be coming off soon, probably in about a week's time. Um, so that'll give the cows a bit more to eat off the ground. They're demolishing it. They'll be gone by the morning. So Holly, the prized, the prized cow favourite cow, she's got a bit of a, a bit of a nasty bit on the back of her tail, she's obviously burst it open, rubbing against something and it's kind of looks a bit dried out and scabby and horrible and I don't want to scare her off because I'm about to spray her and don't want her to try and disappear but you can see the pinkiness to it, so it's obviously kind of dried out and she's been rubbing on it and it's cut and it's scabbed and it's not very looking very pretty so I'll give it a bit of a spray of teramycin and hopefully that'll clean her up. Obviously didn't sting her too much. Just keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks, check it's improving, but it's not too bad, it's just a wee scabby bit. Clean it up.